Hello. The law of diminishing returns. The law of diminishing returns is a short-run phenomenon. It only occurs, uh, it only comes into play when one of the factors of production for a business, that's land, labour or capital, is in fixed supply, a fixed quantity of one of those factors of production. I want to define and explain the law of diminishing returns for you and then work through some numbers to show you the impact uh, of diminishing returns on costs for a firm and, and to show why firms have to accept they need to change all the factors of production and move into the long term. So the law of diminishing returns states that when more and more of variable factors of production are added to a fixed quantity of another factor of production, eventually less extra will be produced with the addition of a unit of the variable factor of production. That sounds a bit wordy, so let me break it down for you. Imagine um, a business where they have a fixed amount of capital and land, so they have a fixed number of machines in a fixed space, and they keep adding more and more workers, trying to increase their output. It's clear that eventually uh, they're going to find that even if the workers are perfectly adequate, there's no difference between these units of labour in themselves. There's just too much labour relative to the capital and the land and eventually the extra output produced by an additional worker will be less than the extra output of the worker before them. And if they keep adding more and more units of labour, then eventually average output and even total output would fall. Imagine that case, you add a worker and the output of the whole business is lowered because the extra worker simply gets in the way. There's too many workers by that stage. Of course, they should be increasing the quantity of capital and land. Let me take you through these numbers, and I know that it's maybe not too easy to see, so um, I'm just going to get out of the way and let you take those numbers. Maybe you want to pause the, and look at the numbers before I get working on them. So let me, let me just get out of the way for you. Okay, what we have here is, a, I'm assuming that capital is fixed and land is fixed as well. The only variable factor of production mm -hmm. here is labour. I'm adding more and more units of labour and that's having an impact on total output. So the first line here, we can see that there is zero labour and of course there is zero output. But when one worker is added to the fixed capital and fixed land, 20 units of output are produced. A second worker of equal um, capability is added and you can see that now output doesn't increase by another 20 I'm assuming that there is increasing returns to scale and that the second worker adds another 34 marginal output so the total output is now 54 it doesn't mean that the second worker is that much better than the first worker of course it's just that working together they can use specialization division of labor and they can produce more uh, per person as a pair than they can when only one worker was working. Indeed, we see that here. The average output, which is the total output divided by the quantity, is, uh, is rising because 54 made by 2 is the same as 27 made by each worker. Okay, the third worker is added and the marginal output is 46. This third worker um, added to the team. Now they have a team of three. Much more specialization and division of labor can occur and they, together the three of them can produce 100. The marginal output was 46 of the third worker. The fourth worker, the marginal output is 51. Great specialization going on. The fifth worker, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth worker. And you can see the total output is always rising, but it's not rising by a steady amount, a constant amount. Diminishing marginal returns, diminishing marginal returns set in with which worker? Well, you can probably work it out for yourself that it is the fifth worker where we see diminishing marginal returns because the fifth worker only added 46 units to the total. The addition of a fifth worker changed total output from 151 to 197. In other words, the fifth worker, compared to when there were four workers, with a fifth worker, the extra output was only 46. Now, that's still a lot of extra output, but it's not as much extra output as the fourth worker had added. The fourth worker had added 51, and the fifth worker is the first worker to be added where the extra output is less than the previous worker's extra output. Until then, the extra output was rising, but with the fifth worker, 
only 46 extra was added compared to 51 alley when the fourth worker entered the uh, workforce. And from there on, in a way, it's kind of downhill because the sixth worker adds even less. What we have now is diminishing re marginal returns because the extra or marginal output is less than the previous workers' extra or marginal output. If they continue to add workers, we see that eventually even the average output falls. That happens here with the sixth worker. The sixth worker is the first worker whose average output uh, with the addition of that worker, the average output was less than it had been previously. Why does that happen with the sixth worker? Why didn't it happen with the fifth worker? Well, the fifth worker, as I said, only added 46 compared to 51 that the fourth worker had added. But 46 was still higher than the average at that time. So the fifth worker didn't bring down the average because 46 was higher than the average. It pulled up the average a little bit. But the sixth worker's marginal output was so low, 33, which was below the average, it pulled the average down. So the average starts to fall when the marginal is less than the average. And you can see that on a curve. The average cost curve starts to fall, uh, sorry, starts to rise when the marginal is higher than the average. Okay, now I haven't got it here, but eventually, of course, if they were adding more and more workers, the total output might even fall and the marginal output would be negative. So clearly this, this, this has an impact on costs Firms. This is output numbers. I haven't introduced any monetary variable yet, but this is output demonstrating to you the onset of diminishing marginal returns, followed by diminishing average returns, and eventually, if they keep adding the variable output, uh, sorry, the variable factory production, the output total output would fall, and we have diminishing total returns. Now, what's the implications for costs then? How can I show you that this has a monetary impact on the costs of the business? So in the second half of this video, I want to, I want to pursue that. 